Hello again, Thrill Seekers. I got a question the other day asking me to explain what is meant by saving all beings. So, I don't know what to say about that. And I've been kind of sitting here on this little plastic chair for a while going, oh, what am I going to say in this video? And, and I decided I'm just going to have to talk and then see what comes out. But... I was looking over this book, Living by Vow, by Shohaku Okumura, which I think is a really good book, and it goes it, it goes through the various vows that we take in Zen Buddhism. Um, somebody asked me about why I say Zen Buddhism when Dogen said you shouldn't say Zen Buddhism, and I, and I said I say it because I don't want to argue with people <laughs> over what's real Buddhism and what's not. Dogen was very adamant that what he taught was just Buddhism. There was no Zen about it. Uh, but at this point in time, I think it's unavoidable to say Zen Buddhism because there's so many forms of Buddhism out there. But anyway, in Zen Buddhism, we take certain vows, and Shohaku Okumura goes through them one by one in this book, and it's really nice, and he kind of goes and tells what they all mean. I'm just trying to find the page. The various vows, verses of repentance, three refuges, robe verse, meal chants, the heart sutra, Emerging of Difference and Equality, which is a great poem, and so forth. But the first one is the one that contains that line. God, where is everything in here? That contains that line, all beings are numberless, I vow to say them. Uh, the way Okumura Roshi gives the Bodhisattva vows in here is slightly different from the way I'm used to. Sentient beings are numberless, I vow to save them. Desires are inexhaustible, I vow to put an end to them. The dharmas are boundless, I vow to master them. The Buddha's way is unsurpassable, I vow to attain it. And I put a little asterisk and made my own little uh, footnote here, uh, delusions. So normally desires is delusions are inexhaustible. At least that's the way I've heard it. The way I memorized it, and this is not Nishijima Roshi's thing, this is something I got from the San Francisco Zen Center, is Beings are numberless, I vow to save them. save them. Desires are inexhaustible, I vow to end them. Dharma gates are boundless, I vow to enter them. The Buddha's way is unsurpassable, I vow to become it. It's just the standard translation that the Soto Shu made up a few years ago, and I figure it's good enough. So Okamura Roshi provides a, an earlier version of the vows, which I'm showing you on screen so you'll be able to read along with me. I vow to enable people to be released from the truth of suffering. I vow to enable people to understand the truth of the origin of suffering. I vow to enable people to peacefully settle down in the truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. I vow to enable people to enter the cessation of suffering, that is, nirvana. And that's an older version of the same vows. I'm not sure exactly where that dates from, but it doesn't matter that much. Whenever I think of the vow to save all beings, I, I always reference the same thing, which is my friend Rob, who one day, he's a guy who used to come to our Zen center a lot, and one day he just said off the cuff, I vow to save all beings from myself. And that, to me, is my favorite version of saving all beings. It's because... I always had a problem with this whole beings are numberless, I vow to save them, like everybody does, because it's a it's an impossible thing. You say beings are numberless, I vow to save them. The thing I always think of when I think of the vow to save all beings is an episode of Superman comics I had when I was a kid. I had this anthology, like about this thick, of old Superman comics when I was a kid, and I used to read them over and over. This is when we lived in Africa, and it was kind of hard to get American comics, so this is about the only American comic. I used to read British comics, uh, but uh, the only American comic I really had an example of was this big, thick Superman book. And there was one episode of that, or I don't even call them episodes, issue of it, in which this probably comes from the 1960s era Superman, and it's like a, a humorous thing. It's like a kind of a jokey Superman comic, and it's how Superman spends his day. And basically, he hears like somebody in trouble in uh, in Metropolis, the town where he lives, and he goes and he saves that person, and he comes back, and then he 
Yeah, he, uh, he hears somebody in, in trouble in, in uh, Los Angeles and he has to fly all the way to Los Angeles and fix that problem and he comes back and he's, you know, puts on his glasses again and he's mild-mannered reporter uh, Clark Kent and then he hears something happening in China and I think he burrows all the way through the center of the earth and pops out in China and go fixes, goes and fixes that problem, comes back, etc, etc. So you get the idea. And it's, it's meant to be a joke. But I think that is how people think of saving all beings, uh, or at least that's how I thought of it when I first heard it. I, I thought you had to be Superman and fly around the world and save everybody from everything that, that bad that was happening to you. And that's not it, because you can't save everybody who's, who's having a bad time. I mean, the, in this world, there are always all sorts of people in all sorts of trouble, and you just can't do much for most of them. That's just the sad fact. And, and a lot of us, you know, we go on social media and the news and we hear about this problem is happening over here and we're like, oh my God. And then you hear about the other problems happening over there and oh my God. And you're just kind of, oh my God, there's all these things going on and you feel like you're going to have to write checks and donate or PayPal, whatever you, however you donate and, and save all these people and you're just not going to do it. So what Rob said, I think, is the real bodhisattva vow, is I vow to save all beings from myself. So I recognize that there are a lot of people having a lot of problems in the world, and I'm not going to add to that. So anytime I have a situation and I can either add to somebody's problems or not add to somebody's problems, I'm going to choose to not add more to their problems. And this, for me, has been an ongoing thing, because you're always trying to figure out how not to add your problems to the problems everybody else is having. Now, of course, there are situations in which you yourself are having difficulty, and, and I think one of the ways you fulfill the bodhisattva vows is you try to live a life where you are not going to need lots of help. So, for example, a really obvious uh, way to do this is take care of your own health, you know, so that you don't become sick and then somebody else has to deal with you. Of course, everybody comes sick at some point or another in their lives and, and, and that is inevitable and it's not something you have to feel terrible about or whatever, but you try to avoid doing that. You try to avoid doing things that make you a burden to other people. So, so anything you can think of that's going to make you a burden to other people, uh, don't do that. You know, that's going to that's going to compromise you in some way that you're going to become in need of help and then somebody else is going to have to waste their time helping you out. That's that's the way I look at it. I try not to be a burden to other people. I try not to upset people, you know, I, I, if people are people are already upset about everything because they're going on the damn social media, like I say, and I'm always railing against this, don't go on Twitter. Just, uh, this, this is, sorry, this is just an aside, but don't ever go on Twitter. Uh, some of you are finding me on Twitter, I think, because I put a, um, a notification every time I put a new video up and put it on Twitter. And I have gotten to the practice of when I do that, I smallinize, I don't know what the real word, minimize? I minimize the screen so I can't see anything else on Twitter except the thing I'm putting up. And then I put it up and then I leave right away. Uh, I'm doing kind of the same thing for Facebook. I look at a little bit of Facebook, but, uh, but most of the time I don't. Because these things just go, you know, and, and the more my mind is like, the less I am able to help other people. So, so that's a reason not to, to do the social media thing and get all upset about the problems of the world or whatever it is that people are trying to get you worked up about today. Just, just don't do that. Don't, don't go there. And by not going there, you become less of a burden on other people. And, and I know the, the reason people do this is because they think they're going to go help. You know, they're going to help the world by tweeting a thing, you know, by making a pithy statement about it that four people are going to read, you know, and, and, and because you think that, that Twitter goes to everybody, but it doesn't really. Your, your little statement doesn't, you know. I, I have a lot of followers compared to, like, I guess regular people, and my, my stuff doesn't go anywhere. You know, finally realize, oh, I'm just saying nothing to nobody. Uh, it, it's just stupid. It's like writing on the bathroom wall, you know. You just, who cares? You know, just just stay away from that stuff. That's a little bit of, uh, just sorry, I told you this was going to be rambling and, and nonsensical. But don't be a burden to other people. 
Uh, that is the way I try to look at that vow to save all beings, because I'm not going to save them. But what we're doing in Buddhism by saving is not what Superman does by saving. We are trying to offer ourselves as, uh, as guides or something. But if we're going to offer ourselves as guides, that means we have to be able to be guides. So another thing I do in order to try to save all beings is I sit gosh darn zazen every gosh darn day whether I feel like it or not. And you would think after 35, it's got to be like 38 or almost 40 years of doing this stuff pretty much every day that I'd be, I'd love it. I love doing zazen. And I read you that quote from Koto Sawaki where you said zazen is embracing the universe. And I'd love to feel like I'm embracing the universe every time I'm doing zazen. But most of the time I don't, you know, honestly, most of the time it's like, oh God, rather be watching cartoons, I'd rather be watching the Flintstones than, than, than sitting here watching this wall some more. But I do that because I feel like it helps me in being able again to save all beings, being not a big mess every time that I encounter somebody in the world. So, so I work on this stuff. The, the idea is often put forth that meditation and things like that are selfish practices because you're just doing them to work on yourself and make yourself feel better. That's not true. And it's not true because the way in which meditation makes you feel better, because it doesn't always make you feel that great. I can tell you from my own personal experience that sometimes, most of the time it's just boring. Uh, but sometimes it makes me feel bad. Um, and very rarely does it make me feel great. You know, like, ah. Oh, meditated I <laughs> a wonderful world life beauty heart salamanders gracious butter peas pecans. you know it's not like that that's not how I feel most of the time most of the time I feel bored and anxious and I want to get up and do something else just as much as anybody else wants to get up and do something something else that that's what I feel when I do it but I do it because I know it makes me more stable and then every interaction I have with anybody else is a little better because of it and I'm a little bit able to shut my mouth when I, I want to say that thing you know and I can go because I know how it feels in my mind when I'm when I'm sitting there doing zazen and I want to get up and do a thing but I'm like okay just gonna sit here so I know hmm, I don't want to I'm not gonna say that thing you know I'm not gonna do that thing that, that gets everybody riled up I'm gonna just kind of just just be here and save all beings from myself so that's that's what saving all beings means to me and I, I know Rob watches these videos so thanks Rob for coming up with that one day and I always give you credit where credit is due because I think that's a wonderful way to look at it so there you go that's what saving all beings is about and if you want to save my being <laughs> you can send me some money uh, I uh, get only my money I get from you is what that is because no salary comes me and book royalties bad so I, uh, I depend on your support for for, for my making a living but if you're having financial trouble stop it stop it don't donate to me don't 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 just keep it for yourself make yourself feel better that's fine other people are donating and I thank the people who are donating because you are the ones that keep me being able to do what I do and not starve to death so we will see you later have a good time all the time bye hey Ziggy Ziggy are you having a good time all the time are you having a good time all the time how are you doing oh, you hate the camera but you're so beautiful. <laughs> oh, Ziggy.